You knew it? Yeah, because I found the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna. <laughs> the temperature in the sauna I can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's mm. because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer. And they did go super sane in skin. there. <laughs> if the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you'd definitely get fried. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if thanks you for found the, the science lesson. The sauna. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just, just hearing talking me like I learned one new fact today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a smarter so, person now. He was so earnest about it. He was so fucking earnest. Then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? We're gonna tell, we're, we're just gonna say, hey, uh, hey Mondo, why don't you show us yours? Indeed. Quite the mystery. <laughs> What if they found out by accident? Sixty-five percent. What do you mean by accident? <laughs> what if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke? Seventy-five. They realized it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. <laughs> I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? God damn it! Just dudes being bros. Can't believe that came back in a real way. Anyone who took their handbook into the sauna, I might know someone who You were my brosif. Seriously? I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was That I might. Who might have brought their handbook into the sauna? It had to be the one who wore all their clothes in the sauna. It was me as the judge. I know it wasn't. I just have to. It clearly wasn't me, but I, I, I mean, look at how much his face is just like sweat melting. <laughs> you seem awfully rattled, Taka. Could it be you know who it actually was? In that case, there's really only one person left it could have been. Looks like I just embarrassed myself in front of everyone. Oh, no. I really want to call one of the girl. I have the HP for it. I want to call someone who clearly just never went in there. Bam. Uh, Junko. Are you sure you've thought this through? Go ahead, take your time. Nah, Kyoko just interrupts and says, You're a fucking idiot. Do it again. <laughs> oh, man. All right, all right. Here's my answer. I absolutely. No, you have to you save your heart because I want you to summer, accuse yourself as the killer at the very end. <laughs> Unless this is the. that. Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago. <laughs> it's true, I'm blaming his lover. <laughs> and for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. No! Wait, hold on! You've got it all wrong! He would never kill! He, he, he did, he did it, Taka. Show me the proof! The actual solid proof! He did it. I don't want to believe it either, but I found something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. What did I find? I don't... I, I don't know what I found. Oh, I have three this time! Card reader, Brokeny Handbook, and Chiro, Chihiro's Handbook. I don't remember what this is. What he says is uh, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna have to listen to it once. You broke your Murder is fun. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine. That's it. Look at how much they're trying to hide that. <laughs> See? Look! Makoto was wrong. I found it. I found it. Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly. 
that, that looks fine to me. Mondo's handbook broke during their Sonic showdown, if I can just prove it. They're all pretty hidden, to be fair. Because I found a broken one, and there's also Chihiro's. And that will show the handbook that Mondo has must actually be. Let's test Makoto's assertion. I'm just gonna load in this one. Also, speeding it up doesn't actually save time. It speeds up the timer, too. Well, it's to get through the dialogue faster. Bam. Mondo. The handbook you have right now. Is it really yours? The fuck is that I, lo I love the slowdown. Not even that, just like the like the background and like the beeping. Like, I don't know. It's just really cool. To me. That was in the main hall. Isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? There's no reason to think that Leon's would be busted because the baseballs couldn't have done it. What I mean is. I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's, which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's. Yes? Correct. But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is prohibited? Oh, owie, for the first, for the, the like, the th third time. Third time now. Borrowing is fine. Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook. For the first time, for the last but time. But if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a great area, I admit. But no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch. What's wrong, bro? C come on, <laughs> tell him he's wrong. The earnestness. What's wrong, bro? <laughs> you are wrong. You have to be wrong. Everything you just said is wrong. You made it all up. Okay, then why don't we look back but on this case one more time? How could they prove it? which handbook he has? By opening it? That way, everything will become clear. Oh, uh, and we'll all see if I, I was guess. right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I, I thought that like by when it's broken, like you. It, Closing it, argument. Wow, I didn't, I, I didn't have to do a, a rhythm battle at all. It's just straight to the comic this time. Okay. <laughs> I thought the comic was before that. No, I was pretty sure that this was the last thing last time. Oh well. Act one. So Chihiro catches uh gets get gets caught. And Celeste is all just like, I see that uh tracksuit there. Da -da -da, and then she's all like whoosh, 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 hide it again, and I get my mouse caught on the side. Uh blueness, right? This one. Blueness. Bam. Man, fucking Celeste just hanging out there, being a sly motherfucker. Got one leg up against the box. She probably just materialized there like a like a fucking lolly chameleon. Lolly it, chameleon. It, it's not. It, it's kind of hard to miss her out of the corner of your eye, you know. <laughs> Maybe it was dark. <laughs> um. Okay. So, shishisha. Act two goes into the locker rooms, and we have. Make sure that I see everything here. So we've got. I think in. She flashes hers. Shh, 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 whip, whip, whip. Comes in and then just hanging out there. Cool. Um. No, that's the bath. That's later. Yeah, enters the boys. Good. Bam. Comes in, sees uh, sees good old Mondo buddy just sitting there, and Chihiro's all just like, "Oh, thank God, my true friend, my realest of boys." 
And then he's all just like, Ugh. Yep, he's curling shit. Sneaks up behind, and then she's like, oh, No! How could you? And then splatter. Even though he looks kind of... No, no, that's not surprise. That is a very insane O'Green. Okay. So, this happens after the big blood splatter. Can't be that. Maybe it's the splatter on the poster. I think it's splatter on the poster. Yeah. So then it goes... And then it gets on the rug. So it's showing all the places that it got to. Okay, drops the murder weapon. He's all crazy insane. We got blood. Act three. Rolls everything up. Okay. Um... Roll, 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 roll. That's putting up the poster because he's wiping his hand across it. This is taking it down. Picks up the body. Get the hand on that booty. Then what? So this is the dud here. I don't need this because this already exists right here. But I'm confused as to what to do now. I'll come back to this. Okay, that's that's the switch. Then we go beep. Yeah, so he comes in. So she, she was just laying on the floor in there. I think it's beep girls locker room. Okay, so we come in here. Yakubich is all just like having his crazy little psychopathicness and just being all just like, hey, this is a dead body of somebody. I'm gonna I'm gonna play fucking mind games with everybody. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Missing something here. It can't be putting the poster up yet. So maybe this one goes here. Beep beep, puts the poster up. That's just supposed to signify cleaning up the area. Still don't know what goes here. Still gotta come back to it. <clears throat> So, at this point, he leaves. Wait, why does he come into the girls' locker room? He just opens that shit up. Yeah, you mean? Yeah. Like, uh, unprompted. They... Okay, so, here he's... Unplugging. I think. No, 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 that's not a plug, that's a doorknob, I think. Right you are. I think the locker rooms don't have knobs, do they? No, they have handles, so it can't go here, and it can't go here. This one's trickier. Bloodlust. Okay, so this... Yeah, so this is where he touches her head and then he writes it, so that goes there for sure. Mm -hmm. He comes back with the cord. Mm 
Ties her up, does the that thing, act five. Here's the evidence getting rid of stuff. <clears throat> That's tossing the thing into the sauna. It falls on the sauna floor, dead. Comes into the bath. Throws it into the sauna and is mad and it falls and is dead. There's like a lot of duds this time because I've only got one missing. Is... Oh, I forgot they throw in like fake bits. I've got four duds in here. Don't tell Mayo. Okay, let me review this stuff. This one is 100% correct. This one beeps to get in. Goes into the boy's locker room. I'm, I'm fairly certain about that one, because the boy also has the handle there. It's obviously not the girl's locker room that goes there. She's entering into the guys. Uh-huh. I'm This also, one at the end is totally useless, because this already exists as a panel. Also, are, are you, did you just say she? I don't, I don't fucking care, dude. I've known her as a girl I, I this know, whole I time. I <laughs> did you do this? It was obviously what she wanted to be known as. Maybe she wanted to be known as the artist formerly known as Chihiro. Like, it's just a dumbbell on the ground. But this is the same shot as this, so that's all. that also already exists. It's, it's another super dud. So I've got doorknob and I've got girls locker room as potentials for here. Yes, here we go. Locked girl's locker room. Up, swipe, goes in. Okay, bam. The is you. First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Man, people don't like those comics. We went from like 15 to 10 in that. <laughs> I like the comics. They're going great. I like, I, I like them a lot. Okay, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Last night, Celeste saw Chikiro in the warehouse, correct? She just wee 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 wee. De-camouflages. She was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You does, can confirm this, right? Does Celeste? Celeste have claws on her fingers? Like metal ring claws? Kind, not all of her fingers, but yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Little ways. Uh... Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room. Specifically, the boys' locker room. I really like the music for these in particular. It works well for this comic storytelling. But how could the victim, mm -hmm. who's apparently a girl, access? Yeah, it's like a remix of like the main theme. Simple, because she was really a he, which is why he was able to use his own handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Chihiro, and attacked him. <laughs> the clip. And that's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. What a great sound effect. Plip <laughs> on the poster. Crunch. Comics are great visually, in my opinion, it feels kind of pointless since I already know everything. I prefer it's complete and they just show a recap. I don't know, I like the puzzle of trying to piece together the visuals of it. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Oh no. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, Pulling up the bloodstained carpet, then removing the bloody poster, and finally carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course, but this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks have been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girls' locker room without much problem. 
reorganizes. And exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. They changed the layout of the boys and girls' locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. That could have been the end of things, but no. But no! Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library, and then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. Act 5. And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sign. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence. Chihiro's handbook. Grrr. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it all played out. Ugh, oh, such a crazy, creepy face. Right, Mondo mm. Iwata? We found you out, Mondo. Man, I feel even worse about Junko now. She didn't even get to be like the, the subject of an investigation. She just, <laughs> you're dead. Completely, just, no consequence, no pomp, no nothing. Just, you're out. <laughs> oh man.